it my finished Otis Autotronic Lobby Panel Annunciator. This is by far the most work I have ever put into an elevator part project, and the end result of said hard work is definitely amazing. So before watching this video, I highly recommend you check out the build videos first. Kind of gives you a glimpse into how this thing works and what I did to actually get it to the state that we're seeing it right now. So this is one of the bigger pieces I have and I spent a lot of time trying to make it cosmetically appealing. I repainted the sides of the panel and that looks really nice. Both sides are painted very nicely and the panel is divided into three main sections. The top being, well, all the displays. So this is where all the numbers and the information is being displayed. So this middle section was for the communication system. So you have a volume control here, the push to talk button here, and then you have a selection of which uh, channel you want to talk to, or you can do all of them. Very bottom here, we've got this really neat analog clock. We've got this mode select key switch, and then we've got different modes for each of the four cars. So these are door switches down here, door open close. This is your attendant key and the independent service. And each of these sections are locked with a key, except for the second one, which actually was drilled out. So I've wired this panel up to be fully functioning. And the center panel here is where all the controls are. So opening this up reveals what the comm system looks like, but we also have this custom panel up here. We've got these two toggle switches, this little display, and the keypad. So the main power switch is this one right here. And if we, we actually hit this, you will see that everything turns on. So you'll notice at the bottom, we've got these lights that pop on. This little display turns on. These lights turn on and the numbers turn on. And also when the system is started up, we'll show Otis Autotronic Elevator or Autotronic Controller and obviously by me. So now the system is completely turned on and ready to run. So we'll start off with down here. This key runs all these key switches. The door key switches don't actually do anything. They're just there for looks. Same thing for the attendant and the independent service keys. So this is the mode select key, and you can change the behavior of the elevator system. So we have the automatic at this state, so the little dot here represents the mode it's on. So then there's intermittent, up peak, up down, down peak, and zone return. And I have it where when you turn the key to the different modes, the different lights turn on. And they've got these neat little colors as well. You can't remove the key when it's on zone return, but you can on every other mode. Then up here we've got this really neat analog clock. Now it's not running right now, but if we open this panel back up, you notice there's another toggle switch. And if I hit this, the clock comes to life and it starts to run. So over here you have the seconds counter and then obviously, you know, the minutes and the hours. So currently the clock is set to 222 and we'll watch it change over to 223. So this clock is really cool and I actually had to fix the original clock and if you saw that in the build video. Now if you might be wondering how do you change the clock, that's actually pretty easy. We have to open up this bottom cabinet and the way to do that is with this key here. We put this key in and we unlock this and this bottom door opens. And in here you can see all of the inner workings of this part, but specifically the clock. You can manually turn these to the desired time. So if we set this to 159. It's now two o'clock. Now the actual time is 4.10. The actual time is 4.10, so we just set the proper time. And then obviously to close this back up, it's pretty easy, you just have to fiddle with it a little bit, but it closes and it latches back up and it's all fixed. Now moving up here to the other portion, this is where you can actually control all of these cars. Now these portions on the side don't work and same with these here, but I did get these lights to come on and they look cool but all the arrows and the actual floor positions all work. Now that's all controlled by using these two elements here. So we've got the display here, which tells you car status. So this up here says R off, which means random mode is off. So nothing will move on its own. Then here you have the car number, so one through four, and then D for destination. So they're not going anywhere, so they're all at one. So the first thing we can do is manually choose a floor for each car to go to. And the way we do that is by hitting this pound button and it says call entry. And it gives you a car number, so we get to choose one. Let's choose car four and give it a floor number. So let's make it go to four, so four to four. You hit this button again and you can see here car four is now going up to floor four. 
And you can do this for all the cars. So we can make car three go to five, car two to 10, and car one to the basement. And it can support multiple calls as well. So if I tell car one to go to one, and then car one to go to two, and then car one to go to three, you'll notice that car one goes up to one, and it sits for a little bit, but then it's gonna go back up again. It's gonna go to two. And then shortly after, it's gonna go up to three as well. And on the display here, you see it shows number one is at three, two is at 10, three is at five, and four is at four. Now another thing we can do is an all call. So we can tell all the cars to go to a certain floor. So if I hit the star button, it says car all. And we're gonna send them all back to the lobby. So push one, and you'll see now when I do that, all of them are currently on their way back down to floor one. Now let's say you just wanna have this thing run on its own to do whatever it wants. Just hit the star button outside of the call mode. So when it's just on this screen, hit this, and you'll see that R turns to on. And you already notice that car one has already been dispatched to 10. Car two has just been dispatched to two, so it'll be on its way up here in just a moment. There it goes. Car three is also going to two. And car four here in just a second will be set somewhere. Possibly. There's always a chance of it not going anywhere either. So with this mode on, you can close up the door and just let it run for a while and let it do its thing. But if you really want to, while the random mode is on, you can also enter a floor. So we're gonna do two to 12. So you can tell it where to go while the random dispatcher is on, and it kind of runs like a normal elevator. This here is the most complex project I've ever worked on. It took me a lot of time and motivation to get this thing done, but I'm really happy with the way it came out, and I hope you guys enjoyed taking a closer look at this thing. So thank you guys for watching this video, and we'll see you guys next time.